All right, welcome to the Ravid Show. I'm super excited to be here at Big Data London. It's day two, and look who I have with me, Oleg, uh, uh, who's an enterprise uh, data leader. I'm super excited to chat with you, say, say. Oleg. Uh, and uh, uh, first of all, thanks for chatting with us today. I know you just gave a session, and uh, yeah. you just came out, and uh, here I am with you, super, wanting to super learn. Excited. Yeah, wanting to learn a little about you know data, AI, data lakehouse, yep. and obviously yep. the journey that you have, you have had. Uh, but just for our audience, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us yeah. more about what yeah, you do. Sure. Yeah. So hi, uh, my name is Oleg, and I'm an enterprise data architect at Jamf. So Jamf is uh, MDM and security on Apple. So if you have any Apple devices and you need, and you need MDM and security, you know you know who to speak to. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So uh, at least I know I have an Apple phone. So yeah, yeah <laughs> I'll be reaching out to you yeah. uh, and. Uh, or like um, kind of also interested to learn a little about you know the relationship that you have with Dremio. I know it's been a few years that you you all have yep. been using. So yep. I'm kind of interested to know about that uh, in your you know work. How do you use Dremio? Sure. Yeah. So we use Dremio basically. I can, again, I'm gonna give you a slight time machine trip. So we started this journey a year ago. So we started building so-called data hub. Because we had obviously lots of requirements in terms of like latency, then obviously building cutting edge uh, data lake solution. Then obviously we wanted to have streaming, we wanted to have iceberg, and obviously we wanted to have some more open source and no vendor locking, right? And that's where we started to partner with Dreamio, because the main benefit of using a solution like Dreamio is you can build your foundation, which in our case is iceberg, and then you can choose your own. SQL engine on top, right? It, it, obviously, when we started the journey a year ago, it was, the, the amount of options was not much. It was, I think, five. Now it's uh, over 17, right? Nice. So you definitely can see that there is a lot of competition, right? But at the same time, we still have a choice of Dreamio, mainly because of the uh, functionality and features it uh, basically produces and uses. That's awesome. Also, I'm kind of curious to learn a little about the data lake as well. How did you build that? Uh, and when was that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so as I did say, we started our journey a year ago, yeah. and uh, we already had a legacy data platform, right. right? Which mainly had such typical core problems, such as most of the data was coming as batch loading, right? So that means the data you get to analyze is not really new. It's already either one year or sorry, one one day old, two days old, and in worst case scenarios, it could be seven days old, right? So meaning that the trends or insights you're trying to get out of the data might not be relevant anymore because it's quite old, right? So that's where we started to think about how do we transform our data and how do we get to more near real-time streaming data. Okay, yeah. that's fantastic. Uh, thanks for sharing the, those insights. So also, I'm also, you know, uh, it's been where, you know, we've been hearing a lot of around AI. Uh, since last three, three and a half years, obviously the progress that AI has happened in AI world. I'm kind of curious to learn a little about from you. How do you see AI being implemented in your work? Have you? Uh, what are the challenges that you see? Because I talk to a lot of enterprise leaders, and they obviously uh, say that in 2024, this is the year of implementation adoption. But there are various challenges that they still face. So I'm kind yeah, of curious sure. to learn from you. Yeah, so I can definitely give you a bit of insights of uh, what's our, so to say, plans or where do we see AI being implemented. So obviously you have to be very careful on how do you use the data and especially if you store clients data with AI. Right? Yeah. Because, because people still don't realize that every time you use AI or, or any kind of chat GPT or any kind of generative AI, every, every, every piece of information you give to AI stays in the internet. Right? So mm. you have to be very careful on, yep. on sensitivity. So the way we plan to use it is obviously we have a very noticeable and, and quite powerful um, data science team. And as you know, data science and AI, they're the biggest friends, right? Yeah. So that's basically where we see interactions the most, is that we're, we're helping data science succeed with their data models, with training their own isolated AI capabilities. And obviously, we make sure that everything is compliant and up to your BII standards. That's awesome, and uh, thanks for sharing that. It is kind of, you mentioned a very important point when it comes to, you know, data science being a very good friend of AI. Yep. It is uh, definitely a lot of uh, work that kind of goes into AI before. Uh, but I'm also curious to learn a little about uh, the future. So how do you see, you know, obviously uh, the future of Gen AI along with data, and how important is, you know, uh, 
the implementation piece when it comes to the adoption i know like i said 2024 was the year of implementation is the year of implementation yeah, sure. adoption so I, i'll probably again scale down towards my lens of perspective from yeah, the for sure. platform right so i'm not going to cover each and every possible scenario yep. so the way we currently also see where we are definitely seeing a lot of potential of ai is again you definitely see quite a lot of trend uh, during this year is about data observability right or your data catalog right because those topics are definitely quite hot and i, I definitely think that knowing more about your data is going to be very crucial in terms of like understanding what's my biggest value of it right because you can get you can you can get massive lakes of data but if you don't know how to use it there is no value right? yeah so the way we see ai emerging in uh, in our use case is is mainly helping us succeed with data cataloging or data observability right because you uh, i'm not sure like if you managed to attend some conversations over here but uh things i definitely noticed was ai can definitely speed up your implementation of enriching your data catalog right right right, right? then observability again it, it can it can help you identify that there are something something wrong in your data quality or or the way that you're overpricing or you're over uh scaling your infrastructure right, right. so that's what, so to me ai is not the, the one and only answer to every single problem the way i see about ai it's a helping tool right as long as you see it as a sub or like a, an extension of your capabilities you're going to succeed but if you're just betting all of your money on ai um, i i don't have good news for you yeah no i love it i love those insights and definitely you kind of picked a very important point when it comes to you know also ai you have to make sure where data cataloging data observability data quality kind of plays a very important role and you need to focus on those kind of things as yeah, well 100% so that's fantastic any other use case that you would like to share uh, around you know since this time you all uh, started using dremio anything on top of your mind uh, well other use cases unfortunately i can't reveal <laughs> <laughs> no i i totally hear you and uh, thanks for you know I have to obviously be very careful 100% No I I I agree obviously those are very confidential and uh, you're doing great stuff in the space so thanks for you know sharing those insights uh, Oleg uh, it was such a pleasure hosting you on the Ravit show yeah. you're amazing in um, you. I'm I'm definitely looking forward to learning more and keeping the conversation continue the conversation Sure if you if you definitely have any questions uh, feel yeah. free to reach me on LinkedIn we'll definitely answer all of your questions Awesome so uh, you guys know where can you reach out to Oleg uh, LinkedIn is the best place he's out there is happy to connect and learn more so thanks once again oleg for visiting the ravit show such a pleasure hosting you you, you too. thank you thank you very much